We're live. This makes him respect you oh and brings him closer. I'm here with a very good friend and we're very excited to be here. Auntie Art Boyd. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, I guess I came to you technically, but thank you for coming on the channel. Oh, my pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited for what we're talking about today. Let us know in the chat if you can see and hear us and make sure you're all present and things with us. Antio and I have been having big discussions today about how we can give you the most value on the live stream. While I'm here, I've got a couple more days here in beautiful California. And we want to talk about a concept today that really will, even if you are feeling insecure, or even if you're feeling unsure, even if you're like, oh, I'm kind of leaning a bit anxious, I'm, I can be a bit needy, and you're worried about pushing the guy away, I'm going to give you a way today to have not just have him respect that, but actually bring the guy closer to you, which is very exciting. I'm going to share a couple of little stories as well. Surprise, we're online. Who we got? Uh, Pink October says she can hear us. Excellent. Sammy says hello from... Uh, where are we? St. Louis? Is that St. Louis? St. Louis? I, I think that's how you so. say that. Uh -huh. Sarah says, hey, yo, Yvette's online. Laurie, we got Viv from Canada. Girl Codes is from Kenya. All right. We got some Kenyans in the house. I love it. Right. Say hello from San Diego. Brick House, we've got some locals. India. Uh, Florida's in the house. Belgium's around. I just came from Belgium. <laughs> Miss California from Belgium. Hi from the UK. We've got Queens, New York, Pennsylvania. Baltimore, Denmark, Australia. Where's my no? That nah, was Alabama. I got I got excited. Damn it! <laughs> Premature excitement. I thought I had an Aussie with me. Uh, Antia, today, Mark. Today we're discussing a really cool topic. Totally. And we're talking. You've got a lot of personal experience with mm -hmm. this. For those of you who don't know, Antia, I should probably introduce you. Antia. Antia is amazing. She's been working in this industry, helping women, strong, successful, smart women. For, what, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. She's got a, a psych degree uh, from Berkeley. Is mm -hmm. that right? Incredible yep. university. Spoken at Harvard. She's spoken at, was it Google? Yeah, spoken Google. as well. All these amazing accomplishments. Keynote speaker. So she knows what she's talking about. She's got an amazing man in her life to back it up. And we're talking today about this concept of expressing yourself and owning the parts that maybe you were insecure about to get the guy to respect you. And bring him closer. Uh, Auntie, did you ever tell for someone who doesn't know you a little bit about where you came from and what yeah. inspired you to? Yeah, totally. Teach? So, first of all, if you wonder where's the name from, I, I grew up in Eastern Germany. Eastern Germany. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that Close accent to it. was, Close, by the way. Close to it. Yeah. Close to it. Okay. Close to it. Um, in an emotionally absent household, which turned me into an anxious, avoidant attachment style. So, we're going to talk about it in a moment. But what it was for me is my mom was sending me the signals, don't bother me, right? Like I'm a burden and I'm sure a lot can relate to that. So when we talk about messaging and what happened to me, I didn't go with that, right? Because normally what we do as a little girl, we jump through all the different hoops in hopes that we're going to be liked and loved by our parents. And so what I did was like, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to become super independent. As a matter of fact, I start to become avoidant right? And self-sufficient. So I don't need anyone. So I don't have to go through that pain again of, you know, of rejection, basically, right? My mom would always say, don't bother me. Yeah. Well, wow. Yeah. We're, we're going to break the standard three steps today for you. Mm -hmm. And you probably heard auntie has been anxious, avoidant, talking about these different attachment styles. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you don't know what we mean there, it's going to bring us straight into step one. And the way to get the guy to respect you and bring him closer is you got to start by, if you don't know it already, figuring out how you attach or connect to a man. So if you don't know what we're talking about here, there's essentially three basic ways all of us attach. Yeah. We either have what's called an anxious. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which you heard Antia speak about. Mm -hmm. We have a secure, mm -hmm. which think of secure as like in the middle, and we have avoidant. Right? Some of you may know this, and if you've read the book Attached by Amir Levine, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, very much recommend it. Yeah. But there's these three attachment styles and, and you can be moderate, you know, you can sort of be mostly secure with leaning, avoidant or anxious. But essentially these attachment styles, they, they have underlying beliefs to them. So did you want to talk a little bit about anxious and yeah. what the underlying belief is there? Yeah, totally. So for an anxious, it's life is kind of like, um, I want to say going to a casino, like it's almost like gambling because you don't know when you get the reward, right? You're always it's like, on the edge. You're always on the edge. You're always sort of your system's aggravated and sort of anxious. And you really, you really want to create certainty all the time, right? And the certainty, of course, for you is it's going to end. 
yeah. so the question becomes right like when is it gonna end how can i anticipate the end and so a lot of these behaviors you know a lot of women come to me they say oh i'm really worried about being needy because i i may be texting too much or i'm always worried and the anxious has this underlying this is going to end soon so mm-hmm. i need like i need to do something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now the response to being anxious you can actually break anxious down because some people when we're anxious we just like i need to text him or her all the time i need to like right. reach out all the time right. Versus some of us are so worried we actually get scared and pull away. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. anxious can present in two different ways. Totally. So secure is the second one. Yes. And secure is like, it's like my husband, right? And it's it's about like really saying, it's just the usual. Love is just the usual. You are loved. You feel safe. You're also easy to communicate. Hey, I love you, you know? And and I don't have any weird like emotions afterwards, right? I don't have a need to withdraw or do some weird dance like that, right? And I stay consistent after my love proclamation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, That's the biggest it. thing. It's like consistency is not a problem for secure. And then avoidant is the third one. Mm-hmm. And avoid, do you want to explain a little bit? Yeah, like avoidant is really like everybody's kind of like on their own. You know what I mean? You have you. Do you do you. I me. That's it. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. So the first step of all this is recognizing and owning what you are. Mm-hmm. because there's no right or wrong, right? There's some that can be more helpful than others, but it starts with knowing exactly where you are. Because if you're an anxious and you try to stuff it down, that's actually going to make it worse. Or if you're an avoidant and you just, just dive into that, or, you know, you deny it, I should say, uh, that's going to make it worse too. So the first piece of this, and you're going to love where we go with this, the first step of this whole thing is to recognize what you are. Mm-hmm. Right? Are you the type who's like, you know what? Every man for himself, as soon as a guy says he loves me, I'm like, he's too needy. Are you, you're always pulling away. Are you the type that says, oh, yeah, I love you. You love me. That's normal. Cool. Not too much of a response. Or are you the type that says, oh, my God, this is so great and it's going to end soon. Shit. What do I get? Like, how do I get this back? Or do I need to pull away? I'm scared. That's the anxious. So mm-hmm. first step, recognize where you are. Absolutely. And acknowledge it and own it, you know, have it. Uh, Jasmine it says, I was anxious. Yeah, let us know what type are you. Do you know straight off the bat what type you are? Because yeah. what we're going to do with this information is we're going to use it to have the guy build incredible respect for you and bring him closer to you and want to connect, which is actually exactly what your story kind of is. Yeah, totally. So to give you an idea, Antia, uh, Antia I should say, yes, started as an anxious but she wasn't the type, her, her response to her anxious was that second type I talked mm-hmm. about where, oh, I'm anxious, so I'm just going to like pretend I don't like him and I'm going to walk away. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because my fear of vulnerability was so strong and I wanted to stay in control. Yeah. Yeah. And someone says, I'm a bit of the first and a, a bit of the last one. So sometimes that's, that's you'll be anxious. Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then as a response to your anxiousness, you pull away. Right. Whereas pure avoidance, just pull away by default. They're just right. like, no, nah, I just every man for themselves totally totally so step two is where where it really gets juicy here and this is about communicating what you are to the guy Mm -hmm. now you might think well wait a minute if i'm just like hey i'm anxious is the guy going to freak out and run actually as long as you do this right it has the opposite effect and will bring him closer yeah did you want to start explaining yeah this kind of works totally totally so it's really all about like letting go of the story that when I become visible, I will be rejected. So we first of all have to break through that limiting belief, mm-hmm. right? To even get to that place. And to also know, look, he's going to leave anyways because you want to continue to send mixing, mixed signals. So when you actually decide to share something vulnerable, you actually have the chance. You set yourself up for success, right? Like as if the man is emotionally available. Yes. Right? Yeah. I had a client yesterday. And we've been really working on her vulnerability. So we're not necessarily necessarily having her share attachment styles. We're working on her general vulnerability and just connecting with men. And she had a whole list of topics that she's like, oh, I don't really want to talk about that with a guy. I find like, oh, that's like makes me uncomfortable. And so we're getting her going through those topics and opening up about them. And she said something really powerful yesterday. She said, you know, Mark, it's weird. I thought when I opened up more, people would reject me. And they're actually coming closer, <laughs> like a word for word quote. She's like, it's the weirdest thing. Like I thought they reject me more. And the more I do it, like the more they seem to want to be near me and connect to me. 
And so what we're doing is we're applying that now to your attachment style, mm-hmm. right? Which is, okay, how do we share this in our vulnerability to actually bring the guy closer? Because it will. So we've got a few anxiouses in the room. Let us know what you are. Uh, anxious and we'll pull away. We've got anxious and avoidant, a lot of anxious avoidance. So a lot mm-hmm. a lot of people Perfect. who can resonate yeah. with yourself, Antia. Totally. So uh, Antia, actually, you were telling me a story yes. where you, with your your husband, they'd been dating two weeks, wasn't it? Like three weeks, yes, not very so long. Two, three weeks. Mm-hmm. And they were at a party and they're like, oh, it was unexpected. So they weren't expecting to run into each other. And you saw him and then you kind of went into like, I'm going to ice queen. Yeah. This guy, I'm just going to like, hi, and then pretend he's not here the whole night. Yeah, totally. Uh, and then you guys kind of made up a little bit afterwards, and then the next day you actually went to even break up with him. Yeah, to end things, right? To yeah. say, hey, it's, it's just not working out, right? Yeah, you're my like, oh, I think it's just wrong. to like a secure man who's consistently communicating with me and showing up. I need a man where everything is tension and yeah. unknown and roller coasters. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what my system wanted. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, before all this happened, you'd actually had a conversation with Brody about this or did the conversation come afterwards? Um, well, we had a conversation had a throughout. Conversation throughout. Like since we met, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the point of this video, the key point, number two, and he gets number three as well. The key point though, if you want to bring him closer with your attachment style, what you can do is something that Antia did, which is you actually have the conversation about what you might do. Oh my God, I, I hear like some women like stop breathing. You yeah, know? yeah, like, oh, I can't oh tell God. it. Oh my God, crazy. Never, never. I must hide it forever. He can never know. Or uh, he's going to take advantage of it. That's the other side, right? Like, oh, now I'm at his mercy. Now he can manipulate me. Right, right. right. Yeah. And it's funny, what actually happens as long as you do this right, and we're going to show you what how it's done wrong and how it's done right. As long as you do this right, number one, you're owning it. And the moment you own something you're insecure about, you're you're automatically more secure about it. It's this weird thing. Like growing up, I had this huge insecurity about my skin, like huge, I'm so pale, huge insecurity of mine for a long, long time. And I knew when I was like 70% secure about it because it was the moment I started talking about it. I was like, oh, me and my really white skin. And I'd like point it out now instead of trying to hide it like I always used to. Yeah. So the moment, number one, the moment you start talking about something, the more secure you are, automatically the guy's like, oh, well, if she's saying it, she can't be that insecure about it. And number two is you actually kind of, you prep the guy so that he knows a little bit of what to expect and and it doesn't trigger him and his patterns, which brings him closer. Mm -hmm. So how did you have these conversations, bro? How did you like... You're an anxious uh, yeah. avoidant, and yeah. there's a few of the lovely ladies here who are like that. I mean, How I did you it. say this like <laughs> two or three weeks in? How do you bring this up without it being weird? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really important. Like authenticity um, and deep connection are really high values for me. So I was really, first of all, it's about the frame, right? Like, so, okay, so because this is important to me, right? So that's what I would say. Like, from, to me, authenticity, you know, raw connection is important and honesty and trust. And so this is what I want to share with you to continue, you know, building this trust, right? Building this container of um, authenticity. And you did this even before you guys were exclusive. Yeah, I was doing yeah. that throughout. So it's yes. pretty early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was doing that throughout. And so then the second step is, so I have, you know, and again, you may not be, my man doesn't even know what an attachment style is, right? So you might just say, hey, I feel sometimes insecure, right? Or I learn from myself from my childhood, right, from my upbringing, that I had a wound created that makes me feel insecure, let's say, okay? And then you say, okay, and you may not know what that means, right? So how that shows up for you is, remember when I was a bitch last week, you know, when I was like, out of the sudden became really moody, that would be like one example. So you explain to him, how does that look like on a day-to-day basis? So he understands, right? Like, and Marcus right like, okay, I get that as a man, yeah. right? Like, Totally. I know where I'm at now with this woman. I actually start to feel safer. I trust her more, right? Because she's uh, she's said it and she's called attention to it, which number one means it can't be that bad or she would try to hide it. And number two, I kind of, I know a bit of what to expect. She's obviously being really honest with me. Mm-hmm. It opens up a sense of trust and safety. Totally. So there's, we'll, we'll give you an example. You know, there'd be two ways that you could say this, Right. I want you to listen as I do this and think, well, if I was hearing this, you know, as the woman or as the guy, 
how would I respond to it? Mm-hmm. You could say, number one, uh, just so you know, I get really needy all the time. So you need to you need to always respond to your texts because I'm gonna like if I, if you don't I'm gonna just get more and more anxious and then I'm gonna get worried you're gonna leave me and so you need to make sure that you always respond to me and if, especially if you have friends like check your phone each hour right you're like oh you're like no I don't how does you, that feel to so, you as a man you're like, oh, oh, like <laughs> oh, right? or or the anxious avoidant would be just as bad if she said. Um, hey, just so you know, like when I get worried, uh, I'm just going to like pull away and reject you. So you need to make sure you've always got your phone on you. Otherwise, I'm just going to like pull away and dump you. Right. You need to always be responding to me. You're just like the guys, that's going to push him away, right? Because you are putting the responsibility of your stuff onto him, which he's not responsible for that. He can't be because he can't control your brain. So that's going to freak him out. Whereas if you say, Hey, you, you get in a nice moment with him and you're like, hey, like, I'm going to be super real with you. I really like you. And every now and then, because I really like you, and, you know, I think this comes from my relationship with my mum. She would be quite distant. And when she pulled away, I would kind of have a freak out moment and then go quiet myself. Mm-hmm. So just like FYI, I do really like you. And if I ever have like a freak out moment where I kind of go quiet on you, that's probably just that thing happening and it's like I still like you and it's not nothing to do with you. So just like FYI, I think I'm in control of it. Like I'm generally doing a pretty good job managing it. But just if I have a day where I like freak out and go a bit weird, that is not a you thing. That's a me thing and I'm controlling it. And I I think I'm pretty good with it now. But just, I'm letting you know. I'm putting this out there because I want to be super real with you. That's what I do when I'm scared sometimes. You see how much, well, hopefully, how much more open that feels to yeah. receive. You're like, oh, yeah, totally. cool, this person's being real honest and real with me. I don't know, do you have feedback or how to present it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would just say, you know, if you're one of those women who's like, but I, I love to be in control and I love to be right and now I make myself vulnerable, right? Like that's that's the next step, right? So if you feel uncomfortable right now, you're in the right place because your man or if you're already with your man, the success of your man lays outside of your comfort zone. Your love zone is just as big as your comfort zone. Yeah, I love that. And so number three, third part of this, comes down to managing it yourself, which is the difference between knowing what is your fear response and what is your vulnerable response, right? So number one, you figured out your pattern. Number two, you've communicated in an awesome way that makes him respect you, makes him trust you and brings him closer. And number three even after you've told him, right, you're still going to have moments where you do it because like telling him is not going to cure it, right? You're probably still going to fall back into your default pattern at times. Mm -hmm. And like you did at the party, right? And then the day after, right, you'd already discussed this with Brody, but (laughs) you had a weak moment and whatever, you know, we all do it, right? And you were like, oh, I'm pushing him away. I'm doing the pattern. Mm -hmm. But you recognized within 24 hours that that was your fear response, not your vulnerable response. Mm -hmm. And so if you do, first of all, knowing what is your fear response versus your vulnerable response. Right. And then what do you do if you're like, damn it, I knew, but I didn't, I knew it, but I didn't catch it at the time. I just even went to break up with the guy. Right. How do I fix this and get back to my vulnerability? What did you, what did you do with Brody that brought him back? Like, how did you correct yourself when you did your anxious? Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it was like about like really being aware of like my nervous system is freaking out. Like my system is not used to a man being consistent and feeling secure, right? Like because yeah, yeah. If my system is constantly aggravated and I'm used to the unknown, right? And and then the other piece also is like, it's too calm. It's sort of like, I don't know, it's too calm. It's like, we're probably not the right match because it's not an emotional up and down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I just, this Very is a common. whole new dynamic for me. Right. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I'm like, like to be in control. So sometimes before I would admit, Hey, I made a mistake. I moved closer to you. Like I, I harden up because I mean, I make sure I don't lose control because it made me feel lose control when you were at this party that I didn't want you to be at, you know what I mean? So and how did you yeah. communicate that? How did you kind of make things right again after you did your anxious avoidant actions? Yeah. How totally. did you make things right again with Brody? You sort of communicated that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And, and and just really also said, you know, like in the future, what I'm going to do is, you know, like I resource, I source myself, right. I check in with myself, like what's really going on. 
and stay in communication with you. Yeah. Because for me, it was always the cutoff. And I'm like, okay, I, I commit, like, I stay in communication. Yeah. yeah. So One way or another. If you're anxious avoidant, then your fear pattern is likely, oh, I feel anxious. I'm just going to, like, put my head in the sand and push him away. So you said something really early, uh, really powerful earlier before we came online, which is you like caught yourself in a moment walking away. Mm -hmm. You're like, damn it, this is fear response. I'm going to lean in. And yeah. Walk closer. Yeah. yeah. And when I did that, I was at the door. That was when Bruce and I were already living together. So that was about six months later. Like my brain was saying, are you crazy? You're going to lose all control over your man and you're giving all your power away. And I did it anyways, right? Which, by the way, when I told him that I just that my ego just wanted to sabotage him and to manipulate him, my I heard the same voice, right? So like that voice will always tell you, no, 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 you need to do all of this to stay in control. You got to stay on top of it. You can't trust men. You know, you never know when you're being taken advantage of, yeah, right? Yeah. Or when somebody uses it against you, especially if you had a mom or a dad who was emotionally avoidant. Right, and right? that's that fear response. Exactly. Exactly. So know your fear response and then know what you do when you're at your best, when you're at your most vulnerable. Because mm -hmm. as, as Antia says, if you're an anxious avoidant, then your fear response is going to be, I'm going to push him away rather than moving in and being vulnerable. Whereas if you're a pure anxious, where you do a lot of the anxious type actions, then your fear response is going to be to drive in and, and do those things, right? And your more relaxed response will actually be to find an element of sitting back and reassuring yourself. So there's there's both, depending what your fear response is, you can figure that out, go, what's my vulnerable response? And then bef both before and after, if you still do it, communicate it to the guy without making him responsible for it. Totally. Shall we bring in Bruni? Sure. Like, yes, yeah, let's, bring in, let's bring in the man. Reflect, the you know, a little bit like, what does it mean to dig me? So we got... <laughs> we got Brody here, and Brody was on the other side of Antia's stories. Uh, these two are incredible together, like beautiful couple. They're, they're so – they're incredible together. And what what was your end, you know, when – what was your experience when Antia, you know, did the anxious avoidant pattern? How did you feel? And then what did you notice that you respected so much when she owned it? Yeah, it was very much like what you guys were sharing. You know, when she was being anxious with me or more being the anxious avoidant, like when she ignored me that whole party, I I sort of was like, okay, interesting. And I think partly why I had that response, like I didn't go into a dramatic, what are you doing? Why are you ignoring me? This is bullshit. You know, something like that. Like some guys- Not even do. in your head? You weren't even- I Maybe just like a tiny bit, but I think it was because we had had those conversations before- Right. I actually had a sense like, okay, she's probably just, just doing having a little little thing. She's doing the thing. She's having a little freak out moment. So I just, I was almost thought it was funny. I'm like, okay, she's okay. She's going to ignore me this party. That's all right. That's cool. I remember but, he was like laughing. I'm like, that's not funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's almost like, like, it's a weird, it's a weird metaphor, but I'll sometimes, uh, I'll coach women. And when a guy is being, being really weird, I'll say to the woman, like, he's obviously got stuff going on that's come from his background. And if he was like a six-year-old in this scenario, you know, a six-year-old will come up and love you one moment and then hate you the next moment and you'll kind of just giggle at them. You're like, pat them on the head. You don't really take it personally. I hate you. I love you. Like, okay, there you go. <laughs> um, and when we're in a state of fear, we all kind of go back to our six-year-old brains to an extent. Mm -hmm. And because Brody had been primed, like they'd had this conversation, he's like, oh, that's, that's the thing she told me about. Like, yeah, it's not a big thing. Like, okay, she's just having like a six-year-old moment, right? Where oh, we're just in our fear brain. Oh, cool. Uh, we'll sort this out later. It yeah. wasn't and, a big and it was like the three-week mark because I told him just so you know, guys usually don't make it past the three-week mark. So I was like <laughs> totally setting him up. You know what I mean? So he knew. Like, just in so case sure I need to bail, twenty-one days and you're out. <laughs> Week three, sure enough, I started to act weird. Yeah, right? Exactly. Like. <laughs> So you knew that, like I just had I told you beforehand, right? Yeah, I just had a metaphor that popped in my head. I feel it's like, you know, the ocean, right? The ocean has the waves going up and down and it's storms can come. But if you go deep enough, it's calm, right? And so I think because she told me, hey, sometimes the water isn't always calm. Sometimes there's, there's going to be a little bit of storm coming. And so just so you know, but hey, at the bottom, there's still going to be the calmness. So I think what happened in those moments when stuff like that would happen in our relationship, I could see then oh, this is just a little storm coming. But I knew that underneath the storm, there was still the calmness, which was, was her heart, you yeah. know, the part that I was starting to really have affection for. And so I think it's powerful because a guy can really anticipate 
the real you versus your patterns and that we all have we all have like the fear patterns we all have this stuff from childhood that we're still always constantly evolving through as we go through life so it was just great to be able to to see that and to, to interact from that place yeah yeah that's, that's beautiful and so i guess to summarize here having him respect you and bringing him closer by the way give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying i forgot to ask that if you are uh, what am I talking about? if you're wanting to make him respect you and bring him closer Simple as starting going, what's my attachment style, right? And the guy doesn't have to know what this is. The guy doesn't have to know what that means. You can put it in language that he can understand, but start by knowing what yours is and then saying, okay, mine may not be perfect for intimate relationships right now, but I can actually use this to create more closeness and vulnerability and connection by talking about it and owning it, owning your shit and saying, well, this is, this is who I am. This is how I am makes him feel safe, makes him respect you because you must be secure about it if you're talking about it. And then knowing what your fear versus your vulnerable pattern is to express it, right? So we all drop, I drop into my six-year-old brain sometime and I'm like hiding, no, I don't want to get away. It's just, right? And that's my fear pattern. So I know my fear pattern, my vulnerable pattern is also to lean in. Whereas if you are, say, more pure anxious, your vulnerable pattern will be to hate. I'm going to not do the full fear pattern. I'm going to lean back, take more responsibility. But whatever your best you pattern would be, know what that is. And then you can communicate it. And by doing so, you give the guy a chance to be like, oh, she's being really real with me. And uh, it's, this is cool. Like, I, like, Brody, like Brody said, I don't overthink it now if I see that pattern. It's just like, okay, she's, she's the waves, but the underneath is still very strong and solid. Mm-hmm. You can actually book a session yeah, totally. with Antia as well. I should mention you can, by hitting the link in the bio, you can book, a, is it free discovery yeah, session yeah, it's a free discovery session with Antia and get chatting to her and get to know her personally and learn about how you can apply even more of what she teaches. Uh, let's have a look at the chat. I'd love to see the chat. Uh, questions here. Uh, Marisa just Brody says, says, thanks for joining. I am an anxious avoid being mm-hmm. honest, authentic and vulnerable. Most both happens to me or closeness pull or pull away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That happens to me because, yep, nice, nice, nice. Any questions? Jasmine says, hey, if you have a question, give the video a thumbs up, by the way. Share it around. If you do have a question, let us know what it is. Lovely analogy. Great interaction, says Vicky. Uh, Kavita says, I love that. Johnny says, that's deep. Uh, <laughs> Pink <laughs> says, hey, mate. Uh, hello from Chicago land. Elena Child. Hello from Nashville, Tennessee. Very cool. Thanks for joining, Brody. Uh, what do we, where is her link? It will be in the description. If it's not already there, uh, we can probably you can head to www.magnetizetheman.com as well. I'll put that in the chat. This is going to challenge me. www.magnetize. Oh my god, I can't spell the man.com. I'm living. I'm living in the land of Z's. I just wanted to say, with like in, in Australia, it's all S's, right? Yeah, it's all S's. <laughs> it's like, it's Fantasize, <laughs> magnetize. Uh, that's right. All these words are, are S's in you guys. We don't really use the letter Z, except for zoo. We went to the zoo. It was great. Other questions. Uh, I've been dating this man for about a month. And he seems to be opening up to me slowly, but he also forgot about a day that we vaguely set, which made me nervous that he wasn't interested. Yeah, Sarah, I think... I think without obviously diving into your situation, I always say, well, insecurity or intuition, which is it? And if you're unsure, just just dive a little deeper with him, which is just being like, hey, we're still doing this thing. And with more information, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I've had all this work stuff on my mind. Or if he just doesn't respond to the text, like that's going to give you more in- information as to whether he is pulling back and being a bit dodgy versus he genuinely just had a you know, a bad day or it slipped his mind for a a legitimate reason. Uh, So if you're not sure if it's insecurity or intuition yet, dive in and and find out without reacting too strongly at the beginning would be my advice without knowing anything else about you or your situation. What to do if a guy says he wants to be with me, but he is not in a relationship with me? What to do if a guy says he wants to be, but he's not in a relationship with me? He doesn't commit... Yeah, these, uh, there's a little tricky without background here. Um, I would typically say that I hear a lot from women who have guys that say, I miss you, I want to be with you, I can't stop thinking about you. 
always look at actions is what it comes back to because women will come to me, they say, oh, does my ex miss me? I'm like, yep. And they're like, oh, that's great. He misses me. I'm like, it doesn't matter. What's he doing about it? Right. It has to get, we miss people all the time, us guys. It doesn't mean that we're acting on it. It doesn't mean that we're going to invest the level of effort to be a partner because we miss you. The actions have to back it up. Uh, Netta says, yes, actions. Uh, any other questions for Auntie and Brody? Well, I've got them here. Y'all can ask me questions anytime, but we got Auntie and Brody here. Do you have questions for them? Uh, Rachel says, love your work. The more I focus on myself, the more a guy comes closer to me. Nice. Nice. My life is more fulfilled as well with hobbies and internal growth. Anxieties disappear as well. Boom. You're awesome, Rachel. Love it. And then Natasha said, is the fear response taking things personally? Well, it could be like criticism, for example, right? Like if you want to be right all the time, if you want to be in control all the time and you have, you're afraid to be powerless or to look stupid or to be helpless, it could be, it would be, it depends on the context, what exactly it is that you take it personal about. Is it fear response? Yeah, I would agree. It, sometimes yes, sometimes no. That's why I wish we do have as well. If you're interested, check out the Empowerment Academy where we can do all our questions in a live format, Q&A, which is uh, makeemyours.com.au forward slash academy. If you're really like, if you have a deeper situation, you can't book a session with either Auntie or myself, uh, check out the Academy because then we can do all these questions like you can actually talk to me and I can get some background. Jasmine wants to know how long is our relationship? Oh, ah. six years together, five years married. To the day. And by the way, it's your anniversary. Jasmine, well, no, and in the summer. So oh. it's like, it's already. Yeah, over. just passed. We met in and Hawaii, by the way. I think we mentioned Hawaii. that. Hawaii. Waikiki. We were both living there at the time. So uh, yeah, it was a long, amazing journey. Crazy journey, but amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are live. We sure are. How long have you two been together? Just answered that one. Like, like, <laughs> congratulations, says Natasha. Uh, what to do if you start to communicate after a breakup, but only when I'm the one that texts or call him and he is hot and cold still. Uh, Melissa, I don't know the time frames. That's usually important in these situations, but I always say like you're often torturing yourself if you're in half in, half out contact with your ex. Like either say, all right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to take six or 12 months, do no contact. And then we can chat after that, maybe be friends, maybe even more if stuff works out. But the half contact like drags things out. It emotionally drags you through the mud. It's just oh, very, very hard. Yeah, I've, I would always recommend a cl very clean, decent chunk of no contact time, at least three to six months typically. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree. So, yeah, totally. Especially, uh, you know, and the fact that you're doing that is probably, you probably have an anxious attachment style too. Um, and then you put yourself back into the gambling situation of, right, like in, out, up, down. And you also, you know, it's not good for your system because you train your system more and more that this is normal and that you're going to attract yeah. another guy like this too. You get used to it and you're always yeah. wanting someone who's not wanting you and then your self-esteem goes down. You don't want your yeah. self-esteem to go down because then you don't do as well in all aspects of life and it, you, you just really don't want that. That's what this channel is all about is raising self-esteem because you're always going to make better life decisions, better relationship, health decisions when you make actions and decisions that raise your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. uh, your channel is awesome. Thank you, Wolfie. Thank you. <laughs> You're amazing. Uh, well, how do you deal with an unemotional guy? Gee whiz, that is a that is a can of worms. That question right there. Well, I can answer that you one. Answer that I, one? I, yeah, I actually used to be what you might call an emotionally unavailable man, and so I wasn't very emotional at all because I I grew up in a household with a mom I felt very controlled by. So. Growing up, my heart was like this because I never wanted to be controlled by a woman ever again. And uh, after my first relationship in college, I started, I had a huge breakup and uh, it actually started cracking my heart open. So how to deal with an emotion, unemotional guy. When I met Antia, one of the things that started opening up my heart that she did was uh, her just letting her own light shine. And that's what we always say to single women is like the power of vulnerability, like we've been talking about a lot here. When you actually go first and you actually share something vulnerable, share your emotional experience and just share the light of who you are, like go from the full range from being sad to being really happy and being in your feminine energy. It can actually inspire a man to want to meet you there and to want to actually 
open up even more. That's what I felt when I met Auntie. Is I actually wanted to share more of my heart because she was so open with hers, uh, even amongst all the stuff that we had to deal with. And so yeah. then it just kept opening. That that's a really good way to explain. It. I really like that. It's essentially you are creating the safety around it, and you're giving him the best opportunity and space to step up into higher levels of his feminine and expression, which is that's what the emotion is. It's it's that feminine energy coming through him. So yeah, that's that's love that. Mm -hmm. Love that, Brody. Uh, this is so eye opening, Nicolette. Beautiful. I'm booking a trip to Australia. Ah, oh, Cherie. Ah. Oh. <laughs> It won my heart. We 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 uh we went to San Diego Zoo on Monday and spent so much time at Australia Land. Uh, just it was delightful. Couldn't give away. <laughs> <laughs> There's a kangaroo there. It was great. Uh, hey Mark from Tunisia, beautiful. I love you so much and learn so much from your videos. Keep up the good work. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Dua, Dua Divine says, should I keep meeting other guys or stop after I found someone I like and a connection is starting? I'm afraid if I see only him, I'll be too available and dependent. Well, you can certainly keep seeing other guys and it's often a good idea, especially if you feel your schedule is kind of empty. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary because you can also fill your schedule with other things, hobbies, interests, and, and passion projects and all sorts of other stuff. So it doesn't have to be men. Uh, for a lot of clients, I do have them early on start dating a few people, especially if they are more anxious leaning. It can really just help them get to know different guys, what different guys have to offer and not initially dive too deep with anyone. And I, I've found that it's one of those things, it's, it's not something everyone has to do long term. And when you're really balanced and centered in yourself, you you really won't have to multi-date, but it's really good for a lot of clients who come through just to just to get them centered and get them enjoying the dating process rather than focusing on this end goal and getting quickly to the relationship goal after only one or two dates. Some cultures need to work on respecting each other, says Johnny. I, I think we all do to an extent, Johnny. I think that's, that's true for all of us. Hi from the UK, says Linda. Uh, that's so wonderful that you can change. Thanks, Brody, for sharing this and your input. Boom. Yes, I love, love, love that. Uh, where is a place to meet men if you live in a small town? Now, it is never a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. There are places there. I don't know what your town is, but I guarantee if I gave you a million bucks to find some men, you'd be able to do it. It shows to me the motivates. It's doable. The motivation just has to be there. Mm. Okay, we will take one or two more questions, and then we will uh, wrap it up. Do us as I love a channel. Though. Thank you. Appreciate that. When you meet a guy, this is from Denny, when you meet a guy you just really like, but work on both sides, but work on both sides and distance, you can't coordinate. How do you get the guy or suggestions? Uh, Denny, that's a difficult one without knowing the specifics of your situation. I would certainly say that distance can be a major compatibility cog, and you've got to assess whether someone's willing and able to work through that distance with you. I don't know if you guys are anything to add to that uh, yeah and i would also say if that's um a pattern for her because if she always has a guy where it's about distance and i would really say where where's your emotional distance right how's your internal like reflecting it back on the outside yeah. where do you want to keep men at a bay a little bit yeah right yeah keep your space there's helena hi helena hey helena helena oh. <laughs> helena we miss you where are you in our life Come down, Helena. Come visit Come us. Down. We'll keep the live stream going. <laughs> we just there's well, there's a nice painting on the wall. You can yeah. just look at the painting until Helena gets here. Uh, okay, there was one. What to do with a guy who goes hot and cold? Says Vicky. Personally, I mean, I have a video on mixed signals, which is really good for this. Just search how to handle mixed signals. Uh, I always say that. Look, number one, it's turn off if someone is inconsistent, because that means their effort is going to be inconsistent mm. and effort is ultimately attractive. Uh, and number two, all you can really do is make the signals clear from your end. And a little bit like we were talking before, when you are a parent and you have like a child that like hugs you and then hates you and then hugs you and hates you, you learn not to take that child's behavior personally. And if the child keeps doing it, you just like, you just kind of pat them on the head. You know, like, he's going to come, he's going to go. It's, it's like a dog is another a metaphor I use where you've got like a, a dog that wants pats or a cat and then it runs off. You're like, all right, well, that's what it does because it's a cat. You don't take it personally, right? All you can do is make signals clear from your end 
and then decide if that situation overall meets your standards in terms of the effort the guy is putting in to build the relationship. In most cases, the answer is no from clients I work with. But every now and then a guy steps up, which is really cool and gets consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a sign. Something Brody was talking about was emotional unavailability as the person comes in and then they're like, oh, but I don't actually feel this close with commitment or comfortable with commitment. Then they pull away. You don't hear from them for three days. This kind of drama cycle. It's not usually or it's not really ever the seeds of a healthy relationship. Uh, let's take let's take one more. Uh, Lisa says, I've asked my question three times. There's so many. I'm sorry. You guys are amazing. You've come online. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, Lisa. I don't know where it there she is. is. Oh, Lisa. Okay. We'll get to Lisa's last. What to do if you trust a guy enough to open up about your problems and issues, but he gives unsolicited advice and says you are just making excuses, which is being hurtful. Interesting question. I don't know if you guys want to have any thoughts initially. Yeah, so I, I was thinking I would know uh, I would know a little bit more about it, and mm. also usually it's about with what energy you show up with, right? So like you must have like a sort of like I'm open to feedback, I'm open to so versus like saying I'm sharing something and all I you know I all I would love you to do right now is literally just just be present. That's it. Like I don't need any feedback. I don't need any advice mm. because men always want to fix. Yeah, you know you're the we first do. one to know that. That's right? our default. Like, you know, yeah. it's like there's nothing wrong. You know, he just wants to, how can I fix it? Right. Yeah, yeah. She's suffering okay. from it. Okay. Me here, problem. That's... Me find solution. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. That's the default. So if if you present the problem as what I what I really do for you today is just like listen and be here with me. I I know I can solve this, like I know I can fix this. And and what I would love for you is just your presence and just just your you here with me right now, just so I can vent and like get a hug. Yeah. Oh, me need to give her a hug. That's how me fix it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally. totally. And, and to really say, like, maybe take the word unsolicited out because it's really like it comes from a good heart from men, really. They just really want to help yeah. you it's just be kind a of, hero. We're, we're, we're pretty useless if we can't serve you in some way. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of our genetic. It really is our genetic makeup. Yeah. Want to feel valued, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you go right back to evolutionary tribal days if a man couldn't provide some value to the tribe what real good was he if he couldn't do something he just takes up food he takes up shelter and he doesn't add any value you know i hate to say it, the, the women would have reproductive value regardless whereas a man had to find his purpose or his uh serving from doing something for someone because he would just be a useless tribe member uh, otherwise so it is it is a little bit in our dna which isn't making excuses but it helps us understand each other and it helps us communicate with each other to all have better relationships so we might leave it there thank you i'm sorry there's so many questions i really want to answer all of them uh but you guys are the best hey just to wrap up again if you want to make a guy respect you and bring him closer number one know about attachment styles and what you do what are you where do you sit on that spectrum? You can grab the book Attached by Amir Levine to learn more about that. Number two, and this sounds backwards, but communicate it to the guy. Don't communicate it in a way that blames him for it and makes him responsible for it. Communicate it in a way that shows that you own it and that you are taking responsibility for it. Then even if you do the thing, the anxious thing or the avoidant thing, you can come back later and say, oh, that was me and my fear pattern. Uh, did warn you about that. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting in control of it. Hmm. And number three is know the difference between what is your fear response and what is your vulnerability response. And that way, every time you catch yourself, whether it's when you're doing it or after you've done it in your fear response, you can go back to your vulnerability response and bring him closer. Antia, right yes. thank you for coming in, guys. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. I love you. Beautiful San Diego. They've had me in their amazing house <laughs> and, and showing us around and just uh, had, we had this amazing dinner the other night. So it was Really cool hanging with you guys in beautiful California. Yeah. I, I, it's just the weather here is unbelievable. It's almost as good as Australia, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I just wanted to say Slightly biased, right? it's just a little bit. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, give the video a thumbs up. Share it around if you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can book in your session with Antia absolutely free via the link in the description. And if oh, you have great. any other questions around attachment, I have lots of attachment videos on my channel. Check out our channel. Link's in the description Antia too. Boyd. Yeah. Antia. Mm -hmm. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Right, I miss you, you already and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye beautiful ladies.